So this video, I'm going to show you an introduction to what are called Voronoi diagrams. So these cause students a lot of problems, and a lot of students really struggle with these. I found this nice thing where someone tried to draw Voronoi diagrams to 3D print like a face. It's supposed to be of, uh, I think it's supposed to be Stephen Colbert, but it looks a lot like Voronoi diagrams. I'll show you what that is. So let's just uh, consider some sort of situation. Maybe you're a city planner and you want to separate, you know, the region uh, into small subdivisions. So some people call them counties. Um, I know in Denmark where I live, uh, they call them a commune. But it's basically the idea is that, you know, there would be these different areas where there's, you know, a little capital city. It's a good way to administer things that way, you know, everyone lives near that capital city. And you want everyone actually living closest to that capital city where they live. Now this may sound a little bit strange, so let me just show you uh, something you can do. It's kind of fun to play with. Uh, if you just do a Google search for GeoGebra, it's called GeoGebra Classic. Just do a search for that one, for example. So this just opens this up here. Let me just uh, press this one here and move the scale here. Now watch what I can do. I can draw some points. So let's just pretend I'll just draw a few random points. Maybe I'll draw four of them, something like that, A, B, C, D. All you have to do is with an in point here, you just type in Voronoi. And do you notice that already back, it already knows you want Voronoi? Now you have to tell it what points to use. So inside you have to put A, comma, B. Let me just do this as fast as I can here. And C, because you have to tell it to use them. And D. And let me show you what it's doing here. So this is a Voronoi diagram. Watch very carefully. Look at the distance from A to B. Do you notice like a, if we look at the perpendicular bisector of this, remember that that is, if I take the midpoint of A to B, C would be here, and this, do you notice this line right here is perpendicular to A to B? But look at this, look at D to B. From D to B, if I made that segment, do you notice the midpoint is here and the perpendicular bisector is that? Look at B to C, look, there's a perpendicular bisector, look at D to C. Um, so this is what we call a Voronoi diagram. And what's nice about this, watch, I can just move them around and it'll show me, like it'll shift things. So maybe I can make them you know, all really kind of weird. But do you notice it's always drawing these perpendicular bisectors. Isn't that kind of neat? So you can sit there and play around with these things and move them around. Whee! But what makes these really powerful is what we're going to use them for. So again, just to remind you, or just to sort of go over it again, look at this. If I go like this right here, hold on, something like... Yeah, maybe like that. Hopefully then it's more obvious. You notice, some, so from D to C, there's this perpendicular bisector. This one right here is from A to D. A to B is here. Do you notice they're equal distance from each other here? Same with this one. Same with A to C, it turns out. So the distance from this to, to this line and this to this line is the same. It's kind of cool, isn't it? And you can just keep adding more points and just doing big, crazy Voronoi diagrams. So this is the idea behind them. I thought it'd be a cool way to just show you by starting out that way. So Voronoi diagrams, they can do crazy things. So let's see what we can do here. Let's do some definitions first. Um, so we've got these things we call cells. And a cell is some region in a diagram. So for example, this right here, this right here could be called a cell. So for example, that one right there, cells, there's an example of a cell. Anything that's within this little diagram here, this little region here, that's called a cell. There's also that cell and that cell and that cell. So these are places you could shade it. Sites, what are those? A site is a point in a cell. So for example, this right here is a site. So is this, this is another site. These are like my capital cities that I was talking about before. So these would be like um, like in Denmark, for example, when they have these communes, then uh, you would have these areas here. And, and what's kind of nice is that everyone who lives in this commune, then their closest capital city to them will be their capital city. In other words, if you lived closer to that one, then you're gonna live in that area. That's sort of how they draw these communes or these you know counties. So these are like small subdivisions. So those are sites. What's an edge? That's just the boundary of a cell. So watch this. So if I do an edge, this is an edge right here. So what does that mean? Well, that's one of these perpendicular bisectors. And look, any point on the edge is the same distance from two or more sites. Watch carefully, look at this. If I pick some point, maybe right, I don't know, I pick some point right here, this point right here on this edge. Well, on that edge, if I look at, look at my distance to this one right here, well, it turns out that's, uh, whoops, I'm just not very good at drawing a straight line. It's supposed to be a straight line. It's the same distance as this. It's going to be the same. So this right here will be the same distance as that one. They'll be the same, no matter where you are. So that'll be kind of a neat thing with the edges. What are vertices? Well, those are places where there's an intersection of uh, edges. So let's say this one right here, that is a 
vertex. So do you notice then, when you're right here, it's an intersection, you're the same distance from three or more sides. Look, from here, if you look at this, your distance to this one, your distance to this one, your distance to this one is exactly the same. So those are some neat features about Voronoi diagrams. So let me actually go through and show you how to find an equation. Now, if we want to try to find the equation of an edge between two points, we're going to do, if you've seen my video on um, perpendicular bisector, same, same, do exactly what we've just done. This is just basically copied from that. Uh, in fact, wait, I should be careful here. I did something slightly wrong. I should call it M2. I should actually change this one. Now that I look at it, I've made a mistake. So I'll put it right here. I'll say change the text here. Because uh, this right here, actually, I'll just leave myself some space to draw a little two, maybe. There we go. See if that works. So what I'm going to try to do now is just draw this one here and say I need a two here. Let me show you what I mean. We're first going to find the gradient of a line joining two points. So I'm just going to remind you really quickly. This is A. This is a B here. And this is X. This is Y. We're first going to find the gradient joining those two lines. So that means I'm going to make some sort of gradient and go, all right, boom. I need this thing. That'll be my gradient. And the gradient, M1, will just be delta Y over delta X. So I just do that. Then I find the midpoint. I use my midpoint formula. Do you remember that one? Midpoint formula. It's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2. Uh, whoops. x1 plus x2 over 2. Uh, and then comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. There we go. That's my midpoint. So that means now I'll find my midpoint. Then I find the gradient of my perpendicular bisector. What does that mean? Well, that means I use this formula, m1, m2 equals negative 1. Whoops, negative 1. That means that m2, then, must be negative 1 over m1. I kind of use this idea. Or I take this gradient that I just find, I flip it, and I change the sign. And then I use this formula to get myself my equation of the perpendicular bisector. So in this case right here, I would use this equation right here, y equals mx plus c. I would use my midpoint. I would use my m2 that I just found right here. I put them all in and hopefully find c. And then I get my equation that looks like this. So that means I would end up drawing something like like that. And that is my perpendicular bisector, is this thing right here. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Whoops. So that is the, the goal with all this, is to try to find, whoops, uh, to try to find this equation of the perpendicular bisector, okay? This thing right here, that's this line right here. This line. And it goes off. So let's see how we can do it with a real question here. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are freaking out, at least at the time that I'm writing this, about uh, 5G. Some people are really worried about it, whatever. Everyone's trying to make 5G towers. Maybe at the time you're watching this, maybe there's 6G, who knows. But uh, in any case, you're planning the location of these cell towers. That could be what you're doing. This could be a map. And then you've got three towers, and there are these coordinates. So 2, 2, so that's point A here. It's at 2, 2. That's the X, by the way. This is the Y value. Uh, so it's at 2, 2, the other one's at 4, 8, and the other one's at 8, 4. Well, first we're going to try to find, uh, so the idea would be, you know, where would where should you place these towers? Where, you know, where basically we're going to try to complete this Voronoi diagram. It's going to be, the, the goal here is going to be to complete it. By the way, I like this, <laughs> day 43, the trees have accepted me as one of their own, because this is actually a cell tower. It's just been camouflaged to look like a tree. Overall reception has been good. Get it? Oh. So we're going to attempt to con complete this Voronoi diagram, mathematically. So step one, let's follow all this. First, find the gradient of BC. All right, let's find that gradient first. So how do I do that? you got to remember how to find a gradient, right? So gradient, I'll call it M1, is going to be, let's see, it's going to be delta Y over delta X, which means it's going to be Y2 minus Y1, all that over X2 minus X1. So I've got to first decide which ones are which. If I'm going between B and C, I'm only focusing on these. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, whoops, and this is y2. That's important to know we're going from B to C. So we're going from here to here. We're going to try to find that gradient because we're going to then you know, flip it and do all the stuff to find this equation here. So step one, let's see here. Uh, y2 minus y1, so it's 4 minus 8. All that over, let's see, 8 minus 4. Hey, look at that. So 4 minus 8, let's see, that's uh, minus 4, isn't it? And 8 minus 4 is just 4. So it's minus 4 over 4. 
What does that give me? Well, they both divide by 4, don't they? So it's actually just minus 1. So I can say then that uh, m1 is equal to minus 1. That's my gradient. Does that make sense here? Look, for every one unit you go to the right, you go down by 1. Right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, boom, you meet there. So that's good. I know that's correct. Now we're supposed to find the equation of the line that completes this thing. In other words, I'm going to try to find this perpendicular bisector of this thing. Well, what did I say we do? Step one was to do this. We're done. Now we've got to find the midpoint of that. So let's find the midpoint of BC. So midpoint of BC. Well, remember, we use x1 plus x2 over 2. And we use y1 plus y2 over 2. So let's do that. So the midpoint then will be, let's see, it'll be x1, which is 4, plus 8, so it'll be 4 plus 8 over 2. And it'll be then 8 plus 4 over 2. Hey, what's that going to give me? Let's see here. 8 plus 4, let's see, that's 12, so it's 12 over 2. And 8 plus 4 is also 12 over 2. So what do I get from this? I get my midpoint is equal to 12 divided by 2 is 6, so it's 6, 6. This is my midpoint. That means I know when x is 6, y is 6. Does that make sense here? At 6 here, should be up here. Is that really the midpoint? Yeah. It looks like that is my midpoint at 6, 6. That's good to know. So that was my midpoint. Now i got to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. I'm going to use this equation, m1, m2 equals minus 1, to find m2. So m2 is just minus 1 over m1. So that's what I'm going to do next. Oh, what color did I do it in? I did it in blue. Fine, I'll do this one in blue then too. So here I go. I'm going to say, fine, m2 equals minus 1 over m1. Well, m1 was equal to minus 1, wasn't it? So minus 1 over minus 1. What does that give me? It just gives me 1. So I have m2 equals just positive 1. That means now I know my gradient of this perpendicular bisector. Remember, it's got to be 90 degrees to this line, so it's something like that. It's going to be gradient of 1. Nice. Now I'm almost done. That's the hardest part. It's just about done. Now I just got to get it in this form. y equals m2x plus c. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to find my equation here. y equals m2x plus c. And I'm going to use what I already know. I know that when x equals uh, whoops, when x equals 6, I know that y equals 6. I'm using my midpoint here. I'm using this midpoint. So I know that that is 6, this value right here will be 6, and I know that this value right here, m2, will be 1. So let me go ahead and put all those into there. So that means I have, let's see, 6 equals m2, which is a 1, times x, which is 6, plus c. I use that to find c. Well, what is that? I have 6 equals 6 plus c. Therefore, c equals 0. Does that make sense? That's the only way I can do 6 plus something. It still gives me 6. What does that mean? That means I'm finally done now. That means I can say, aha, therefore, my equation goes y equals, what was m2 again? It always goes m2 x plus c. m2 was 1. So 1 times x plus nothing. It's actually just this, y equals x. Phew. That's because, keep in mind, my c was 0. Keep in mind, that's only because c was 0. Notice that right here? c was 0, so that's just why we didn't have anything else. I mean, we technically have like a plus 0, but we don't really do that, do we? So we just leave it. Now, we're supposed to then, so we've got this equation y equals x. That's what I've just found, y equals x. And the goal in this question is to complete the diagram. So let's do that. Let's complete this diagram. I'm supposed to draw this line y equals x, but I don't want to draw the whole thing. I just want to draw the part you know, where this thing intersects. So let me try to do that. y equals x means it passes through the um, origin, because it has a y-intercept. Technically, you know, it's y-intercept of 0. So it passes through this point right here. And then every one unit goes to the right, it goes up one. Right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, or right a little bit, up a little bit. So do you notice then I'm going to attempt to draw myself this line that would go from, well, from zero all the way up like this right here. This is what I would attempt to draw. Does that make sense there? Except I don't draw the whole thing. I shorten it. So I'm going to grab my line and I'm going to make it just go like that. Do you notice how I sort of cheated? Ta-da! This is my line, y equals x. That's this line right here. y equals x. That's this line right here. It's just that I just didn't draw the rest of it. I didn't need... Let me just try to draw a nicer y here. y equals x. Keep in mind, it does keep going. 
I just didn't need that part of it. So this is the line. Now what can we say about the cell containing point C? Well, we can say that, uh, I mean, what could we say? We could say that all the points, all the points uh, in that cell are closest to C. This is maybe a, a statement we could make. So this is, now we're done this question. See what we've done here? So that's because if you're somewhere in here, so let's say uh, you're near this cell tower, maybe maybe you live somewhere here. You're closest to that cell tower. Do you see that? If you live here, you're closest to that cell tower. If you live here, up, oh, you're closest to B, so you're not closest to C. So that's sort of the kind of question that you could be asked on an exam. I like this one. It really makes me laugh. So how can we use this? Why do we care? Well, city planning. I mean, there's something later I'm going to show you called the toxic waste dump problem. There's important ecology, ge uh, I mean, geography, when you're doing planning, economics, believe it or not. We can even do this in computer science to actually minimize these things. So this is actually quite important, and it's kind of a neat geometry thing that uses a lot of our math. That's what's going to make these complicated and challenging for people if you're not super good at this. But I promise you this, if you practice this, you're going to get really good at these things. And then you can actually make these nice, pretty diagrams.